I see a whole army of my countrymen and women before me, and they do not flee. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that every single one of you realises in your hearts what this means. I'm not going to say too much here. I'll save it for the church. I'll save it for what I've already said in Westminster Hall. But you stand here, 700 years to the day, perhaps to the very minute, that William Wallace breathed his last. Do you think Wallace could ever have envisaged us here in our hundreds, standing on the spot in central London? What goes around, comes around. All men die. Not all men really live. Wallace lived and died for Scotland. For too long, the leaders in Scotland have buried their heads when it comes to us as a nation state. Yes. William is the figurehead, but tens of thousands of Scots have died over the centuries to try and set their country free. We owe those tens of thousands big time. We owe William Wallace. And let us hope that what he began will end in our lifetimes to see Scotland stand on a world stage as a nation, a proud nation state again. Yeah. There is one word synonymous with the life of William Wallace. You all know it. The politicians of Scotland know it. There is no shame in saying it. It's a simple word. It doesn't have to be wrapped up in any sort of grandeur. And we should all be able to say it. We'll all be able to say it without any kind of feeling small. It's simple, but it doesn't need to be wrapped up. And I'm going to say it. And I want you all to shout it. And you let Wallace hear this in heaven. Because he's up there and he's looking down. And I want him to hear you say it right after me. Let it echo through London. I want to hear it. Freedom. Let me hear it. Thank you. Now we're going to have one or two wee things done, but I've got a good friend here, Scott Begbie, is just going to say a few words, and then clan and drummer are going to let them see here what Celtic passion and spirit are all about, primeval and from the soul. Scott. Thank you, David. I've been asked to say a few words about Wallace, what Wallace means to me. And to be honest, it was kind of hard because to start with, Wallace almost didn't mean anything to me at all. Because I'm of the generation of kids that weren't taught their own history. I grew up knowing nothing of Wallace, nothing of my past. But as I grew up, things didn't make sense to me. There was gaps, there was things I didn't understand. How come most of the time it was British, but sometimes it was okay to be Scottish? How come the people on the TV and the newspapers talked to me in a language that wasn't mine, in a voice that I didn't recognise? So as I got older, I started to look. I started to look into the history of Scotland, the history of my nation. What a glorious, tangled story that is. Victories, defeats, loyalty, betrayal, sometimes in the same breath. A tangled mess of a history. 
But cutting through it all was one voice. One voice from 700 years ago that spoke to me as a kid and it speaks to me now and it speaks to all of you. It still speaks 700 years after the day he was butchered here in this spot. And he spoke in a way that cut through all the nonsense and all the mess. He spoke to me of a simple thing about being free, free from oppression, free from fear, free from hatred, free to live your life in your own land with the laws that you respect. There's a voice that they tried to silence 700 years ago today, and they failed. They've tried since, and they've failed. And they'll always fail, but it's up to us to make sure that that voice is never silenced. It's up to us to tell our children and our children's children what Wallace means to us, what Wallace means to all of us and how we came to be where we are just now. The question I was asked, what does Wallace mean to me, isn't the right one. Is what does Wallace mean to us? What does Wallace mean to our nation? And the answer to that is a very simple one. He means everything. <laughs>